Hi, welcome to Scrambled. I'm Dylan McGilligan. I'm Nora Flay. And we have quite a show lined up for us today. We have a welder, a future UC Davis student, a San Diego State frat boy, and anything else old sport? Uh, a fabulous movie review, I have to say. Hmm. And we picked this topic because it is relevant to the aging high school population that is starting to think about what they're going to do after high school. So, you could be a pilot, you could be a sailor, and you or could, could go be into a college. charismatic television host. Stay tuned and find out what people in Davis are doing. with Brian Simmons and he chose to go into like a different route after high school. He's going to go into trade school for welding. So Brian, can you tell me what, uh, what drew you to uh, trade school instead of like a four-year college? Well, over the summer I took some introductory welding classes and I really fell in love with them and I continued to think about pursuing welding as a career and I looked at the different options and I decided it was what I wanted to do. That's so cool. I feel like that would be like a, a really tough decision to make, but. Yeah, it, it wasn't too hard for me actually. My parents were very supportive of it and I was really passionate about it and I was pretty set on wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. so. so what type of welding do you think you'll be doing? What, uh, what does a welder, a modern welder do these days? Well, there are a lot of different paths you can go down with welding, which is part of why it appeals to me. There are a lot of things you can do. Uh, there's pipeline welding, you can do shipbuilding, you could go into the aerospace industry and build airplanes. Uh, one of my goals is to get into motorsports and racing, like making custom cars and race cars. That sounds so cool. That's like every boy's dream. You know, I, I hear like, um, I just don't hear about enough people going into, um, you know, actual trade, um, like schools and stuff. Uh, is, do you think it's common? Uh, I think that people are doing it a lot less these days. Um, there are a lot of welders that are at the age of retirement that are going out of the workforce and there aren't a lot of new people coming in. So there is a bit of a shortage of people in the trades. So Brian, you mentioned that you're interested in welding cars. Uh, what part of cars would you be welding? Uh, mostly like the frame and chassis and mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm also interested in working on cars, the mechanical aspect of it too. So would this be like body shop work or like fixing a bumper that got smacked or? Uh, maybe a little bit, but I was... out a car or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm more into kind of building cars from the ground up, you know, uh -huh. starting and welding together like a frame or something like that and then adding on to the rest of it. Uh, so if you were to like give any recommendations to someone else who was interested in just going straight into like a trade school, what would you tell them? I would say think really hard about it. It's a really good option and if it's something you really like to do, I think you're gonna be successful in it. So what classes are you taking at the high school right now to help prep you for American River? One of the classes I'm taking is ROP Automotive Technology. That's kind of like the advanced automotive class at the school. Uh, I took it because it gives you a little more freedom to kind of work on different projects and do more stuff in the shop. I'm also doing an internship through that class and I'm going to one of the repair shops in town four days a week and working with the mechanics there. That's so cool. Uh, so how long does it take you to go through all your classes at American River? Uh, it depends on how intense you want to get with your scheduling. You can take it easy and only do a few units per semester or you can try to cram as much in as possible and some people can get through their two-year degree in as little as a year and a half or even less. Oh, that's so nice. You just get to, you know, get what you need and then you get to go out in the workforce and really learn by doing. Yeah. 
you can really adjust your classes to fit your schedule and take what you want and not take what you don't want to. There's a lot of options. That's just awesome. Oh, and what is your favorite car manufacturer? <sighs> favorite manufacturer? I don't know if I don't know if I could choose one. I, um, Do you prefer European sports cars, American Muscle? I, I'm an American Muscle car fan. Oh, good. Can't argue with the classics. Excellent. All right. Well, it was really cool learning about uh, just going into trade school and a different route to follow after finishing up high school. So thanks for joining us, Brian. Thank you. No matter how much the government, outside organizations, or really anyone has tried to crack down on drugs and alcohol among youth in the United States, no one seems to be successful. I mean, ever since the love explosion in the 60s, no one has been able to truly deny the youth their rights, and I feel like it's, at this point, kind of a fruitless battle. Like, even the, the war on drugs, it's another war that has never really been successful. Uh, drug lords are more powerful than ever. Just like the war in Iraq, just some wars aren't really just not meant to be. And that brings me to North Korea. Um, it's, it's a bad sign of America that we, as a superpower, cannot stop another country from pushing us around like that. Like, they are threatening one of our allies, and we seem to be able to sit down and do nothing. We're, you know, in the DMZ, but um, what do we do about that? Like, we should act, we should act. You know, Iran is also threatening us, but when it comes to nuclear programs, there's just nothing we can do, you know? I mean, I don't know. That's just my opinion on situations in the U.S. So, you know? That's all I have to say, really. Rock this! So now we're back with Aaron Burbank, who's pursuing the normal route for most Davis students, who's going to a four-year college, UC Davis, actually, the local choice. Now, Aaron, most people rebel against going to the town college because they're far too close to their parents. How do you feel about this? Well, um, I'm going to be living at home, so... It's like the extreme of living, of being too close to my parents. But um, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've heard from a lot of people that are going to UC Davis that um, even, even living at home, you still spend so much time on campus. And like it's just a completely different life and a completely different town if you're in college, um, even if you are living at home. So like, I mean, you, you, have, you have all the options to be in town with your friends. You know, it's a lot different. Um, and if your parents are, you know, like, good about curfew and stuff like that, they probably won't give you a curfew because you're in college. Um, hopefully, they're not giving <laughs> me one, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Um, but it's, you have a lot more freedom still. It's still significantly... Um, okay, I'm yeah. going to cut you off there. Um, so, do you plan to stay at home all four years or just the beginning? Um, if, if, if an option becomes realistically possible for me to get an apartment, uh, with a couple of friends, that would be, I guess, more ideal than staying at home. But then that's going to cost money, so. And if I understand it correctly, you now live in Woodland, next to a friend of mine, actually. Shout out to Wheeler Bills. So uh, how are you planning on getting to UC Davis? So I don't actually live there yet. But will you by the time you are in college? Yes. So. Are you going to be driving? Yeah. So. Um, I am, in fact, driving. Breaking the whole bicycle cycle of Davis. Yeah. Hey, this is good, though. I do not like UC Davis cyclists, for any of you out there. I don't like you at all. So, like, everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a... I don't know exactly, like, what the mileage is between here and Woodland, but it would be uh, tiring, exhausting to go for... Yeah, I think it's about 15, uh, but maybe a little less. You'd be going 17 green. to Sacramento. But um, just it would be exhausting to do that right before class and then have to sit through, like, a three-hour lecture or something. He's so sweaty also. That'd be yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, everyone would be like, oh, he's... He's the one I want to sit next to. Yeah. Sweaty Aaron again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, what classes... What, what are you majoring in? I'm going to be majoring in history, um, minoring in film. Um, so, I don't know how that's going to go because there's, like, no jobs in either of them. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Great. You're going to be happy. Yeah. And, and in a cardboard box, but... <laughs> well, and how are the film classes at UC Davis? Uh, it's a really small film department. It's like, um, it's within the art department. Like, there's like a very small film department, but it's still there, and you still get to you know go through film theory, and you can do all the other aspects of actually producing and making films and 
creating films and filming them and editing them and doing all the aspects that you would normally do at a bigger college like maybe UCLA or uh, NYU. Uh, it's just not going to be on such a big scale with such you know, high quality equipment probably. It's probably going to be a little bit scaled back. And are you currently working on any films? Uh, with you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Aaron, I'm so proud of you for going to UCD, and that means you will be with us for even longer. So. Yeah. That'll be great. <laughs> Just excellent. <laughs>So I've seen two of the movies currently in theaters, Iron Man 3 and The Great Gatsby. I enjoyed both of the movies, which is very rare for me. I typically don't like movies, but Great Gatsby being the classic American novel written by F. Scott Fitzgerald, who is distantly related to Francis Scott Key, who wrote our national anthem while sitting on a British boat out in Boston Harbor. Now, is that related? Yes. There is a harbor in Great Gatsby in which Gatsby looks across and sees a green light, which is a symbol for hope, and also a symbol for Daisy, who he had lost seemingly forever, but he gained riches, built his whole existence over the mirage of being rich and powerful and someone that she'd want to marry, but she had been married away and gone for five years to another rich polo player. So as this story unfolds, I don't want to spoil it any more than I already have, it is interspersed with Fantastic visual effects by the overly stylish Baz Luhrmann, who also directed Romeo and Juliet. Moulin Rouge. And Romeo and Juliet had Leonardo DiCaprio in it, same as Great Gatsby, and he did a fabulous job as well, as well as Tobey Maguire, who was known for his role as Spider-Man, so seeing him in a different role was uh, confusing to me, because he was not Peter Parker. And that got me for a good half of the movie. And on to Iron Man 3, let's see. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic as ever, and they had some interesting twists with who the villain was, but I don't know, it didn't capture me quite as much as the first Iron Man did. I, uh, there's a few conflicts with Pepper Potts. Did, did you see either of these movies? I haven't seen any of these, so this is... Then I won't give too much away from you, enjoying. but she almost dies. You think she dies, but then she doesn't die and he doesn't die. And I thought making her a martyr would have been much more interesting because we only need Robert Downey Jr. And I think having a person like Gwyneth Paltrow in that movie just drags him down. She's always controlling him like, you're Tony Stark, you have all these amazing suits, why can't you just be your own man? You are nothing without your woman though. I mean, just look at Gatsby. Is that said? Gatsby died Ever? when he realized he could never get the love of his life. So. I think he died because he was shot in the heart. And of a broken heart. His heart was not broken. He had Daisy in the car. And it was actually Daisy that caused his death. Daisy ran over the mechanic's wife. Oh, do we have a welder in the house? Um, anyways, and so Daisy ran over this woman, and then the husband of the yeah, I think you're spoiling wife, the story. due to miscommunication, came and hunted down Gatsby and shot him in the heart. That is why I died, not because of Daisy. Fortunately, I read the book. So and Daisy ruin ruined it. everything. She caused both their lives to collapse. Gatsby could have been a happy, rich bootlegger if it wasn't for Daisy. Argue that. Uh, she was honestly the only conflict in the movie. Tobey Maguire was just there. They, Gatsby and Tobey Maguire could have been the best bros. They could have just had these wild parties. They could have been great friends. But no, it was all about Daisy. He was looking to secure a happy relationship later on in life. What, what happens when he retires? There could have been a happy relationship. Like Tobey Maguire and Gatsby. And he would not retire. He was being funded by the crime boss. So I don't see why Daisy even had to exist in the story. Like, come on. Everyone needs their lady. F. That's Scott true. Fitzgerald, I am disappointed everyone does not need their lady. And same with Iron Man 3, Gwyneth Paltrow could have been eliminated and Tony Stark could have been back to being a billionaire philanthropist which and a playboy, which he was already. So the movies are actually very similar in the aspect that they're rich men who have excellent lives, great friends, such as um, Jim Rhodes in Iron Man. But it's ruined by a woman. And that is the... Summary of both those movies, ruined by women. Okay, I don't think that's true. But that is Dylan's opinion of these movies. So, I think I'll check them out. I'm not sexist. So we're joined here by Patrick. I don't... 
Um, His name is Patrick Kreidler. Yes, Patrick Kreidler, and he is a college student. So Patrick, <laughs> where are you go going to school? It's your first year, right? Yeah, uh, I just finished up my freshman year at San Diego State University. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't trade it for anything either. It's been so, it's, I mean, you know how people kind of build up college like it's going to be this big, huge thing? Especially in Davis. Yeah, they're exactly right. <laughs> it's been fantastic. That's amazing. It's indeed. Um, so where did you go to high school? Uh, I went to Davis High. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it prepared me for college a lot better than I thought That's it would. <laughs> and what, uh, what sort of organizations are you involved in? Um, my first semester, I rushed a fraternity, which, you know, my mom was not too psyched about, but... My dad was in the same one when he was in college, so it was all worth it. Um, so I did that first semester. First semester is really busy because of that is hard to balance out school and all that, you know, social stuff. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, it's been great. I would advise, you know, uh, kids that are going to be going to four years, especially where Greek life is kind of a big thing, to definitely consider rushing. It's been one of the better decisions I've made in college. Well, there are these stereotypes going around about fraternities, about the sort of grimy decadence that seems to surround such houses of alcohol, drugs, women. How would you respond to this? Um, I mean, there's going to be stereotypes associated with just about anything. Um, they're never 100% right, but they're always derived from a little bit of truth. There's, you know, when, you, when you're in a fraternity, you see some stuff that you can't unsee. Just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, are they similar to sororities? Uh, they're not similar to sororities at all. Uh, I know there's sorority girls that don't even know their like big sis's name. <laughs> like they have no, I they have like no connection with each other. Whereas with a fraternity, I actually feel like I can talk to anybody that's in it. There, our chapter has 180 people in it, which is the biggest um, on campus and one of the bigger ones in California. And I could name just about anybody in our entire house and know where they're from and be able to sit down and have a real conversation with them. So oh, I think they just differ in that aspect. It sounds like it's a really good thing to become involved in when you're just starting off in college because you get to meet people. Right, exactly. And like college is a great place to network with people for your future career and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's what influenced me to change my major actually. Um, I came in as a communications major and I saw the um, you know variety of business emphasis, which is what I think I actually wanted to do all along. And um, some of the older guys kind of, you know, nudged me in the right direction and got me interested in the business side of, the, of uh, school. So changed my major and I haven't really looked back since. So as being part of a frat, you actually do schoolwork. Yeah, we actually, we actually do schoolwork. It's kind of tough to wrap your mind around it, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, what made you pick San Diego as your school? Um, well, like I said, my mom went there, so I'd always kind of, we'd take vacations down there all the time. It's where my parents met and stuff like that. So um, I'd always kind of been around campus. And um, I don't know, I just really liked the vibe I got when I, when I visited there, as cliche as it sounds. I actually really just liked the way I felt when I was on campus. So you had one of those moments where you're like, this is Yeah, this one is of those home. really girly <laughs> moments. So, uh, so let's go back to school. Um, how many classes did you take last? I took 15 units both semesters. So um, it's five classes. Was that a, a piece. good amount for Yeah, like it's, a, it's a healthy workload. You're going to be really busy. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what advice do you have to the seniors that are coming into college uh, next year? What would you have done differently? I would have taken more AP tests because there are kids that are coming in as like halfway done with their freshman year just in unit count already. Mm -hmm. So I would have taken more AP tests and I would have, I don't know, I wouldn't have like messed around so much in high school. Like uh, just getting into a good school and being able to study what you really want to study makes it all worth it. So if you were you know, if you have to trade off instead of not going to a party in high school and like studying so you can get the grades to go where you want to go, I say do that because it's all worth it in the end. Well, that's inspirational <laughs> for me as a junior. Yeah. A true scholar. <laughs> uh, w w anything else you'd like to share about college or? I mean, rush. <laughs> it's, I, I can't emphasize it enough. It was probably the best decision I made this entire year. So you would recommend rushing for boys. Would you recommend rushing for girls for joining a sorority? If they can get along with girls, if they don't already hang out with like mostly dudes in high school, because mm -hmm. you're going to be around up around 150 to 170 girls all the time if you're in college and you decide to rush. So it's something you definitely need to consider, but mm -hmm. depends person to person, I guess. Uh -huh. Is it true that sororities exist for fraternities to take advantage of? No. Is it rolling right now? Alright, three, two, one. Well,
Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode on Scrambled. That basically wraps up our show. Shout out to Luke and Cassio Mariscotti for being twins. Shout out to Ryan Kreidler for being on the baseball team. Follow me on Twitter at Paper Shredder. That'll be on screen. Anything else, Nora? We're not including that. Why not? We can't include that. We, we need to close the episode, not do a Facebook post. But everyone does this. We'll redo this one. All right. Thanks for joining us here on Scrambled. It's been a great episode tonight. A great episode to remember that my opinions on the show are not indicative of that of Dylan McGilligan's. And we hope you tune in next time to see Nora and Dylan in action. And follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>